changed over the last uh, I'm 56 years old now. So. In most of our activity, the green motion picture starting Olivia and John and John Travolta covers almost all the major teenage sorrows and joys of love. Even religion is, con is considered. It considers career also. It was the most successful motion picture musical of all time, despite costing only five or six million dollars to make. Hard to believe since Elvis made 33 musical movies. Emotional Relativity list axioms of Olivia theory of love from her the most famous songs check for consistency and analyze can have real number of operations not just the scripts not just the script since applying an operation is a cumulative process and you can be partially done likely going to a higher level when decelerates since more complex reasoning axiom no point in, in dreaming of a lover forever when you can never have that lover and you'll, you'll be alone forever since it's be better to choose another lover than to stay alone. Not even in the Grease movie, they had, uh, Rizzo said that I waited around for Mr. Wright and she could hurt someone like herself. Emotional relativity. I need a summary of my theory of love and mental illness also. Since many mental illnesses are really just excess or de deficits in emotion for some reason, and this even results in physical illness directly or indirectly. Also, add Olivia's theory of love. I think I, once I wrote her a letter and I asked her what her theory of, l of love was. Well, I think she answered and she said that she was surprised that I asked her, I think. Because there's, you know. The unification of emotions, the emotions of sadness, elation, courage, fear, etc., are all the result of the love force being strong or weak. Don't confuse emotions with sensations. And love is not the same as pleasure in a sense, since we can feel pain because of something or someone, yet we still love them. Or is it because some, sometimes there is a mixture of pleasure and pain? Question mark. Emotional relativity, the basis of ERT is the nature of a relationship of what we call love object theory. The emotional response to a love object is relative and depends on number one, nature of love objects, number two, nature of lover, number three, nature of situation. Emotional relativity, the grandmaster, Olivia Newton John, sings in one song, I believe in love. Uh, previously, previously sung by Dionne Warwick. Uh, I do not believe in love. Also, Olivia Newton John and John Travolta sing, if you if you're filled with affection, you're too shy to relate. Meditate my direction, feel your way. That is, let your emotions guide you in in what you do. Emotional relativity. Olivia describes love in her music collection. Uh, super theory. Love is the cause of all the emotions we have. It depends on how strong it is or how weak it is for love object, i.e. ourselves, an object, another person or God. Really, before Aristotle used the idea of love as the key, as the only force explaining everything in the universe, the, the the prime mover, which was God, was separate from the world, and the separate other separate intellect, or or maybe all of love, were loved by the spheres or planets, which were animated, and these brought forces down to this planet and moved everything, including people. So love explained everything. But then after, with Newton, they got rid of the idea of love from physics altogether. And even Einstein does not mention love in his physics. Uh, well, she mentioned uh, Olivia's music collection really is very wide ranging. I don't know if she has many talents, but it covers like <coughs> as well. Of course, uh, innocence, naivety, and it was used the sex sexual image and uh, marriage and much parenting and even uh, de de 
force or any illness and gospel and spirituality and hope and party many many dimensions of music also she started out with country music but then she changed more to uh, a rock I think mm. super theory love is the cause of all the emotions we have it depends on how strong it is or how weak it is for love object i.e. ourselves uh, an object and another person or God emotional relativity super theory emotional love <coughs> is the force of attraction between love objects and Olivia's music collection describes the emotion of love she describes the nature of the force between love objects and the kinds of problems people love object the kind of problems between love objects that arise and joys between love objects that arise or are love relationships the main the main phenomena to be studied since they cause emotions question mark and the components of love relationships are the two love objects and force of love between them so like Aristotle created the syllogism and described in its nature Olivia describes the nature of love relationships or affairs which existed for thousands of years the syllogism has two premises or logical objects and a conclusion or logical relation so it has three parts and similarly a love relationship or affair has two objects and a relationship love between them so we need to give a summary of Olivia's theory of love as represented by her music collection over 30 albums plus her films and interviews may need summary of her effects on one or more fans also well see my notes I think I have thousands of pages on Olivia Newton John's music collection and her life Aristotle realized basic need for syllogism in two is two premises for logical demonstration. So also Olivia realized that for a true affair, both lovers, both realized for a true affair, both love objects must love each other. I reciprocal love. Many people stay with someone they love, even if the other person does not love them, or stay with some, uh, someone they don't love when the other person loves them. Even in Jacqueline Suzanne's record-breaking Valley of the Dolls novel, one character said that each time they were in a relationship, uh, either they loved or they were loved, but never both, and that it was impossible to have it both ways. These three women in the story were idols. And this was in Hollywood. Uh, dolls meant uh, beautiful girls, but also meant or celebrities, or it meant pills because they um, take a lot of pills in Hollywood uh, alcohol, uppers, downers and drugs uh, a lot of a lot of singers uh, die from drugs and actors emotional relativity also in Margaret Mitchell's record-breaking Gone with the Wind novel the main character Scar Scarlett married three times but she never married for love. Once she married for revenge, once for money, and once to have fun. But in one song, Olivia sings, if you, if you love me, let me know. If you don't, then let me go. Take the chains away that keep me loving you. This suggests the need for reciprocal love. But if there is a small chance for love, then a person may keep pursuing and waiting for a love object even for years or decades. This is from page 47. Title Xanadu Relativistic Guide Olivia Einstein Maimonides etc. Imagination Relativity Key for Roddenberry's world is that it offers humanity greater wisdom and greater technology so it can do greater things and, and live better. Imagination Relativity You consider fictional objects in this science. <coughs> Imagination relativity, the Grandmaster Roddenberry describes an imaginary world which is closer to paradise than our real world is. So it, it is better even if one day humanity will go to a better paradise. He gave us a view of paradise which exists in the imagination of many people now. Exclamation mark. So describe it in summary. It also helps prove paradise is possible since it describes it, including the immortality of the soul, the best imaginary world is a possible future world. Imagination relativity. 
Write a summary list of the most significant critiques of and praises of Brandenburg. Collect them here from list of 500 or more in notes. Well, now I think I have uh, maybe uh, over well, thousands of I think I have thousand I think I have thousands of pages on Roddenberry now. It's about it's about 800 episodes of Star Trek in different franchises. I didn't I only didn't see all of them. Maybe I some of them I saw many times, but uh, I think I have hundreds and still didn't see. And there's about uh, 13 movies that I, I think I saw those. There's one Star Trek movie that came out this year, which I saw twice in theaters. I usually don't go to theaters now. And it's the 50th anniversary of Star Trek. I also went to Comic Con this year, which was the 50th anniversary, and you had three generations. You had from uh, the next generation, the original series, and Voyager. Uh, very important characters were there. Imagination and relativity have a lot of incredible praise and criticism, criticism of Roddenberry summarizes. Imagine, imaginary relativity. See our ten or more models of paradise. See especially your, our discussion of Roddenberry. World called Star Trek and our discussion of its implementation. Well, Roddenberry really is super engineering our or engineering at a very high level. You have to design it, you have to implement it using technology. Da Vinci had a lot of ideas, but he couldn't implement it in his time. Even Babbage designed the computer, but he couldn't build it in his time. It was only a hundred years later that people at Harvard uh, were able to build it. But even now in computer science, you very often, even if you're able to build it, you sometimes they design it at a very high level because the details don't matter. These can change all the time, but you want a very high level uh, design. So uh, you know, a design like Star Trek would be very useful because it's, it's more eternal. The details can change. That's, I think it's called uh, abstraction in computer science. Super theory and diagnosis and treatment of psychosis use one of the methods of proving existence of things to re-establish the relink to reality. <coughs> Relative economics question mark. You, you may have very little money, but if you know how to use it and have great skills or talents to, to use it, then you can make it a, you can make a bundle of money when it is nothing for most people. Uh, even a simple idea, like I recently found that Google became more popular than Yahoo as, a, as, a, as a, a search engine on the internet, the World Wide Web. Because the, the way it, or, it organizes things when you search for something is by how, how many, how popular pages, how many links it has. Yahoo just organized it by, by category. Because um, when you search for something, there's so many matches all over all, all over the world so uh, if, if you're a, if you're a businessman you want or, or just want personal fame you want your idea to show up most often and to be towards the, the top of the list so if you know that uh, Google organizes it by by how many hyperlinks there are then maybe what you have to do is put a lot of hyperlinks on your web page so it will be closer to the top of the list because uh, Google creates an index and to help searching so that, that could help you so more people will find you and instead of finding some other uh, capitalist or other friend in relative sociology, <coughs> we are not all equal, so relationships between two people is different in society. People have a different nature, but also greatness. <coughs> well, that's from one of my mind, is another philosopher said that. Relative politics, people occupy different places in the, in the leadership structure of hierarchy of society. 
and this affects what they can do in the world for themselves and for other people. Uh, even money, even money is a way, can very, be very limiting. If you have more money, you can do more things. Okay, uh, page 48. The relative religion, this includes a relative theology, relative providence, relative for worship, relative prophecy, relative divine testing. Each person's relationship to God is different and depends on his nature and his pseudo-free behavior. Relativity, we define four new realms of investigation according to the kind of relationship between person and object. Number one, relativity. Number two, virtual. Number three, super. Number four, prophetic. Also a science of each faculty, question mark. Revolution. Virtual relativity. Each person has a different indirect relation to the sensible world. Revolution. Super relativity. Each person is differently related in an indirect way to the transcendental world. Revolution. Prophetic relativity. Each person has a different direct relation to the super sensible world. Relativity theory. It is necessary to divide this, uh, the system into four main parts, depending on whether one person whether one considers what is related to one directly in the world empirical or two indirectly in the world virtual or three indirectly to something beyond this world super sensible or four directly to something beyond this world prophetic so it's clear that all the virtual rea rea relativity theories and all the super relativity theories and prophetic relativity theories are similar to empirical relativity theories except that they involve a different kind of relationship to the universe Part 1. Empirical Relativity, Perceptual General Relativity, Intellectual General Relativity, Will General Relativity, Imagination General Relativity, Emotional General Relativity, Unification Theory. Part 2. Virtual Relativity, Virtual General Perceptual Relativity, Virtual General Intellectual Relativity, Virtual General Will Relativity, Virtual General Imaginati Imaginati Imagination Relativity, Virtual General Emotional Relativity, Virtual Unification Theory. Part 3. Super relativity, super perceptual general relativity, super intellectual general relativity, super will general relativity, super imagination general relativity, super emotional general relativity, super unification. Part 4. Prophetic rel rel relativity, prophetic perceptual general relativity, prophetic intellectual general relativity, prophetic will general relativity, prophetic imagination general relativity, prophetic emotional general relativity, prophetic unification. Okay, page 49. Introduction or summary for the relativity. Okay, maybe I maybe I should add to this, but anyway. Maybe it's good though in a way, because I added now some from the twentieth century, so maybe I did add already. Introduction or summary for relativity. Aristotle three hundred fifty BC gave a proof of the existence of God, but he is <coughs> but he's conceived as a prime mover and saw him as simple and immutable that is unchanging in a way. The heavens revolve forever and need a mover, and a series of movers cannot go to infinity, and an infinite force in e is needed so the prime mover cannot be corporeal. The law of inertia was proposed about 1500 years after Aristotle. Aristotle's philosophy was mostly concerned with this planet, and as, m as such Averroes and Maimonides accepted all of it. Averroes explained Aristotle's ideas and Maimonides and Aquinas elaborated his ideas. Maimonides, <coughs> 1190 AD, created a whole rational religion based on the theoretical metaphysics of Aristotle. He spoke of the main pillars of religion, both theoretical, physical, psychological, sociology, uh, theology, and practical prophecy, providence, worship, and divine testing. Maimonides considered God as being the prime mover based on Aristotle's philosophy, but he also considered the possibility of God being necessary to exist according, uh, according using also using Aristotle's philosophical principle, he found that the necessary existence can be a being that is completely adequate, uh, separate, completely separate from the world. For he tried to argue that there is no relation is possible with him since he is simple, substance, non divisible, uh, and immutable, so outside time. And causality is the kind of relationship. Maimonides made the original claim that the prime mover and necessary existence cannot be the same thing. Are these related to the third and fourth di dynamical antimonies of Kant respect? Okay, question mark. Maybe the first and second mathematical antimonies also. St. Thomas Aquinas, 1200 AD, held that the exist existence of God had been logically demonstrated and that it is inexcusable not to believe in him. Aquinas listed five ways of knowing God and tried to complete one of them. God 
is necessarily existent and he exists since the series of causes cannot go to infinity but ends in the first cup. But necessary being has existence in its unlimited sense. God is pure being, then he must have the fullness of being and is perfect and thus exists. Spinoza, 1650 AD, took the opposite extreme of Aristotelian and claimed that God is infinite in number and degree of attributes and that the world exists in God, the world being modes of attributes of extension and thought. Well, really, again, maybe it wasn't pantheism, but polytheism, maybe human beings were gods. Galileo, 1610 AD, and Newton, 1700 AD, indirectly attacked the great prime mover proofs of God because of their law of inertia and reduction of laws of motion of the planets to physical principles, respectively. Well, like I said, they didn't, uh, there was no need for love of anything. It was just, they, they used gravity. Page 50, Beaton Notes, 2008, Einstein. Immanuel Kant, 1750 AD, indirectly argued against the great necessary existence proof of God by the Aristotelian. He argued that there are three possible ways to prove that God exists, and all these reduced to proving that the necessary existence exists and, make, and linking him to the Andre Lissaman, or perfect being. He called this the ontological proof, but he claimed that this cannot be done since existence is a synthetic predicate, that is, cannot be proven by using the law of contradiction only. So this goal is impossible to accomplish philosophically. But he considered the theological argument for the existence of God as a strong proof, even if it only proved the existence of an architect who no longer exists. He did not realize that existence can also be analytic, since it is possible to prove that something exists in all possible world, and we know at least we exist in some sense, so it must exist, even if it exists as an a in, in an eminent world, because the nature of its existence is different or exists in a transcendental world. And Albert Einstein, 1920 AD, did not believe in a personal God. He denied freedom in the world and so believed that there is no providence since God will be judging himself if he judged us, for everything follows the laws of causality. Einstein's system and Newton's system gives positions and motions of objects in the future given their current position and nature in a deterministic way. Calculus attempts a calculus. So for them there is no room for free action and their systems seem to agree well with experience and maybe chaos theory challenges this. Gene Roddenberry, 1988, did not seem to believe in one supreme being, but he did seem to believe in the existence of godlike beings in the universe. He saw his system as represented humanity or how it should be. It's possible to interpret his system as more realistic by taking aliens to be theatrical versions of angels living in paradise. But it, it is needed to, but it, it is needed to make many improvements even there. Oligon John, 2018 create a theory of love which includes the joys and sorrows. We need to solve many of these problems to make paradise possible and the possibility of paradise is one of the greatest proof of the existence of God. Since it is his chief goal, it is humanity's chief goal. Okay, well. Okay, so that's the end of the, uh, the article from 2008. Uh, well, I did include Olivia Newton John and John and Jean Roddenberry from the 20th century. Um, somebody told me Jean Roddenberry is Jewish. Olivia Newton John, her grandfather Max Born is Jewish. I don't know if I should include other people also. But from the 20th century in, in, in philosophy, like I said, okay, Herman Cohen, but anyway, so at least he offered a way to go beyond Kant, because Kant was a dead end, it was very powerful. And so I knew Kantianism, so he might gave a way to go beyond Kant, even if I was, I'm not that given a religion. He also created a, a book uh, religion of reason, which is compared to my mind, this guy, which I didn't read yet, really. And phenomenology of Husserl, also 20th century, he also uh, spoke of a way to go beyond Kant, 
need and also niche uh, a bit and niche was more said like, in a way to, to build paradise in this world I think to accept God is dead so funny where we rely on ourselves and although Wittgenstein really um, offered a solution to to Kant's antimony he did the same thing Kant did except using logic and language of Frege and Russell and he thought that you actually can what you the solution is that you can ground metaphysics and in, in, la in the new logic and the new, uh, not the new language, well, mathematics also language, the new logic and the new language of Frege and Russell, but in the end he rejected that because uh, many languages are possible. And many of them. But really, you know, <coughs> but and in a way, I did. I did before that. Before even I found out, I did something similar to 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 Wittgenstein. I didn't take language later. Later, I analyzed regular language, regular people. I, I, I argue that there are there is a, a, a logic that applies to all universes. Therefore it applies to our universe. So we can say prove things analytically about this universe. So philosophy is possible. Later I even joined it with Einstein's physics, which in, in a way is like a Cohen's method, which I didn't really, I didn't know Cohen, that's what Cohen is. But he doesn't mention Einstein because he's before Einstein. Or he was a, also a colleague. So really my, my, my approach really agrees with Cohen a bit. You take the principles of metaphysics, like a priori, and join it with Einstein's physics to, to prove things about this world. So that goes against uh, Wittgenstein was considered by many people to be the greatest, greatest philosopher of the 20th century. Einstein is considered to be the greatest scientist of the 20th century, if not of, 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 maybe of all time or equal to Newton. Um, also, her, her Searle argued that you can know the world by the method like similar to Maimonides. Also, uh, uh, the ontological, pr I, even, I even argued on mathematics even. Mathematics even, I'd be able to prove things a priori. What do you think of this article? Article 19. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. This is this is I wrote this at age four. I know I write and I typed it around age 47, almost 48. And I've come a long way anyway. Eight years. Basically, I have to, to watch this uh, over and over. So now it's now 11.17. So that's two hours, about 70 minutes. I think I have a few minutes left. I have to
to watch it again and again to see how good it is. But I have something, I have, so I have many lectures now, I think I have lectures on Einstein. I have 2014, I think, 2015, 2016, and now this comes before that, 2008. So it would be good to compare and I'll watch that and see how it is. And so I just, so today I recorded maybe four or five lectures on Einstein or Einstein and Kant, I don't know what to see. I went I went pretty fast too because it's tight notes. And I added some new 20th century notes uh, in very quick summary. <laughs>